Hey everyone, coming at you again with another game for the Apple IIGS. I know that I do a lot of games for the Apple IIGS. I've done a lot of these on my channel over the years, um, and I know that I was one of the very few people who actually had one of these computers when I was a kid. Uh, you know, they weren't that popular compared to uh, regular Apple IIs, like, you know, the Apple IIe especially. But um, I really think that this was a very special computer and a very underrated kind of computer. And I was just thinking, you know, there was a game that I actually had when I was a kid, and I don't know where I got it from because I don't think this game was ever officially released. I was in contact with with a guy who, um, you know, had, he he had the hookup. He he had some kind of hookup where he got games from somewhere. I don't know where. Who knows how people got games back in the day? Uh, but um, let me go ahead and show you uh, what kind of game it is. So here, when you, it's always so annoying when you start these simulators. Now you have to first press Control B and press Enter to get out of the monitor like that. Now you can do the usual uh, read from slot 5 to uh, boot the game. 2GS Loader from The Screamer. All right, so this is obviously a uh, cracked version of, of the game. So yeah, the game's called Pinball Wizard, brought to you by The Hood and The Thug, thanks to the MC Cracker. And there appears to be a phone number for, B for BBS there in the lower left, and... <laughs> Uh, I did look it up. If you're wondering what area code 313 is, appropriately enough, that is the area code for Detroit. So, um, yes, the, the hood and the thug did indeed come from the hood. <clears throat> okay, let's move on. I have the emulator running at the original uh, 1 megahertz speed, which is kind of slow, but... You know, I'm, it's it's nostalgia. You know, I'm remembering the good old days when uh, when you had to wait five minutes to uh, to boot anything to to run any program. You know, the uh, the two GS. I mean, it made this kind of waiting kind of a pleasure. You know, it wasn't like on a Commodore sixty four where that uh, fifteen forty one floppy drive would just spin for half an hour and nothing would happen. You know, you get little graphics like this. You'd get that little red bar climbing up, and it would be kind of cool. It'd be you know, you'd have that anticipation of of knowing that something interesting was about to happen. I mean, the first time was kind of cool. After that, it was annoying having to wait. But, you know, the first time when you when you actually ran something and you saw stuff like this happen... I mean, look at this title screen. This is... I feel like that we've lost something in title screens from games over the years. You know, title screens now are kind of... They, they're... They, they've taken a trick from Hollywood movies. They try to be like... Um, they, you know, games try to have the same sort of intros that, that, that movies have. But, you know, there's really something to be said for... There, there's... A certain amount of world building present in a title screen like this. You know, you've got that robot playing a pinball machine, and then on the right you've got a, you know, like a can, a, like a bottle of oil, which is obviously, you know, he's, I guess he drinks from it. And then left, you, you just got a wrench sitting on the table there. And then I don't even know what that red stuff is. It looks like caviar. Like does the robot eat caviar? It's, or maybe it's the oil. It, it might, it might be that he poured the oil into a glass because you know he's a, a civilized robot. He doesn't drink it straight out of the bottle like a, like a. Barbarian, he you know he pours his oil into a, a glass or a cup and then drinks out of that. Oh yeah, listen to that sound effect. That's awesome. So yeah, so this is um, well as you can see this this is called Pinball Wizard. Um, this was originally released under the title of Macadam Bumper, and by a French company uh, called. ERE or ERE uh, Informatique. Um, it was republished a few years later in North America by Accolade. Uh, you might have seen the Accolade logo on the title screen there. And yeah, it was a total flop. Now, one of the reasons I wanted to highlight this is just because it reminds me so much of EA's pinball construction set. But in contrast to that, which was a huge hit, like, you know, if you if you watch Gemini's uh, Ancient DOS Games videos, or not Ancient DOS Games, but uh, Shovelware Diggers, if you watch his Shovelware uh, Diggers videos, he always comes up with a ton of... Oh, the game went into a demo. I was talking so long, but the game actually started a, a demo. Okay, let's watch what the demo does. Um, so, yeah, so... The pin, EA's pinball construction set was really uh, just just massively popular, but it um, it was so low tech. I mean, it just had you know plain like four color CGA graphics. Your only colors were magenta and cyan. It was so limited, and yet it was a huge hit. And then you had something like this, which was so much more capable. You can, you can just see from the graphics alone. You can see the graphics are miles better in terms of quality, and uh, it just. Uh, 
it just didn't play out. Like, it just, this, this game has been pretty much totally forgotten. Um, and it's a shame because, you know, it, it has pretty decent, uh, I mean, you know, it's it's not, by today's standards, it's not that impressive. But, you know, this was this was still the 80s. This came out in the, in the uh, as far as I know, I think it was in the 1980s. And, you know, for that time to have graphics like this and to have like an edit, editable pinball table where you could put stuff on the, you know, I'm going to, go into the settings here and I'm just going to speed that right up. Let's make it unlimited speed because I do not feel like waiting forever for it to do whatever it's doing there. So I'll uh, I'll show off some of these features a little bit later. Wow, it's really carefully positioning. So yeah, you can kind of get an idea. You can kind of get an impression here of all the things that are possible with the game. Um, I'll go over these a little bit later, but... Uh, I wonder how long this demo would have lasted in real time. And this is taking quite a while on unlimited speed, which basically means that it runs, you know, like at, at totally at at the speed of the of the emulator or of the emulating computer. But it really um I mean if this takes this long, then it would have taken probably forever to to uh run the unaccelerated demo at the at the original one megahertz speed. Okay, so it finished building the table, now it's gonna so yeah, so I'm still not doing anything. This is still the demo. I'm just watching what it's doing. But yeah, what you do is you put in a coin and then you push the button to set how many players you want. And then you, uh, was that the end of the demo? Oh, I think that was the end of the demo. Okay, so I'm going to put this back down to, let's leave it at, let's see, do we want, like, I'll leave, yeah, let's do maybe 2.8 megahertz for now. Let's see how that plays out. So, okay, so what do we do here? So, like I said, you put in a coin. Hey, oh, the, the demo took over again. How do we get out of the demo? Come on. There we go. I pressed escape. Okay, escape escapes the demo. So you put in a coin. It's a very nice coin inserting sound effect, in my opinion. You press the button to say how many players you want. In this case, I put in one coin, so just do one player. That's an awesome sound effect. I, I was very fond of that sound effect as a child, and I still am today. Okay, and you just click here to start the game. You cl click on the wrench to go into the control panel. We'll see that in a second, but let's go ahead and play the, the default table here first. So, um... You know, it's it's pinball. I mean, um, I think, yeah. So pressing the control key controls those left flippers, and I think shift, yeah, shift does the right flippers. And if you hold both keys, that operates the plunger. So it'll keep pulling the plunger down. Then if it goes all the way down to the bottom, then it goes back up to the top. So I'll release here. There we go. Now, in common with EA's pinball construction set, the f whoa, that did not last very long. All right. So, um, as I was saying, in common with EA's pinball construction set, the physics here are kind of questionable. You shouldn't shouldn't really expect like absolutely real world physics. This is not uh, it's 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 not quite the uh, beam and G drive of uh, of pinball games. That's uh, that is something it is not. But. Um, I think, oh nice, I, it drained back into the plunger so I could, sh so I can shoot again. I think what it lacks in, um, you know, in, in physics realism, it more than makes up for with its just, just wonderfully colorful graphics. And I like the sound effects too, I mean, oh. The only sound effect I don't like is that, that obnoxious sound of the bonus points tallying up. But otherwise, I like the sound effects in this game. You know, they're very understated sound effects, other than that one sound effect I just mentioned. But um, they're very Apple II GSC. I like the I like the sound of Apple II GS sounds. They have a very sort of, they're very tinny, but because they're, you know, they're early digitized sounds, it's like, it's kind of like having a sound blaster in, uh, you know, the time when sound blaster didn't exist yet. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. Um, and yeah, and I mean, again, like I was saying, what this game lacks in, in real world f physics simulation value, it more than makes up for just with the ability to make your own tables. And you can get really creative with those too. Like as you kind of saw in the demo there, and I'll show in, in just a little bit, um, you can you can do some really amazing things with this game. Like the, the level of detail that you can control in your tables is pretty, uh, it's pretty impressive, in my opinion. 
And it's just, it's to me, it's a real shame that this game has been so forgotten because, you know, again, Pinball Construction Set, it's, it's not bad. Like, it's certainly, uh, it's a classic in its own right, but I think that this game should have been better remembered than it has been. Okay, so I got 25,010 points. Let's go ahead and click on the wrench here and let's see what we're getting into here. So... I mean, obviously you've got the parts here. It's like I can take a flipper and drag it over here and say, okay, now there's another flipper on the board. You know, other, I mean, I, you can just drag stuff in like that. It's easy to do. But, um, and you can drag stuff around. So like I can take this thing over here and put this thing over here. And you can drag stuff here and there. Um, static elements. I mean, th this stuff here is just window dressing. Like this is not something that you can drag around like this woman's face and stuff. But you can edit it with the um, with the paint mode here. So yes, yeah, so, like I can say I want, you can mix and match colors. You can say like I want, um, theoretically, Oh, do I need? I guess I need to choose a color here. Oh, okay. I guess I can't just drag the sliders. Oh no, I can. At least I could. I, I could drag it this one for a moment. Now I can't anymore. I don't know why. Huh, that's odd. Well, anyway, so you can you can choose your colors here, and normally you can drag. Yeah, now I can drag the sliders around, but I can only I can only do it once apparently. You can only change the slider once. I don't know why. Okay, anyway, and then you can draw. Like you can just come out here and just start drawing arbitrarily. And if you find that that's too thick, that's I guess that's using this paintbrush here. But I can take the pencil here and do like single pixel, you know, sort of fine tuning. And you can you can see on the left side it zooms in, so you can see the exact fine details. Like if I want a, like a yellow circle around that thing there I can kind of draw it like okay I did not draw that very well I am not good at drawing a circle but I drew one uh and this is obviously a fill tool so like if you want to fill in something this is probably oh it didn't do it oh wait, that's a line wait hold on what's going on here is it I thought that this was a fill tool but maybe I am wrong okay that's interesting. Okay, it looks like a fill tool. Uh, all right, fair enough. So yeah, so... And yeah, obstacle mode. So... Um, decoration mode basically is just, like I said, it's just window dressing. It's not something that affects the ball. It's just it, it's just to make the table look nice. Uh, but obstacle mode will actually draw things... I mean, it works the same way. It looks the same visually, but this will actually create something that will block the ball. So this is something that the ball will hit and bounce off if it hits it. Kind of hard to tell the difference uh, visually. I mean, you can't see any difference here, so you kind of have to be careful and know what you're doing. You have to, you have to remember what... I mean, hopefully you you know what you want to block the ball and whatnot. Hopefully you have kind of a plan in mind for what you want to do with it. But anyway, what does this do? Uh, this Oh, I see. This shows you which is which. This shows you... Oh, I get it. The red parts here. If you hold this down, if you hold this button down, the red parts are obstacles and the non-red parts are just... Um, for show. Okay, cool. And if you say oops. Hmm. I thought that was an undo button, but it doesn't seem to. Oh yeah, it does. Okay, it undoes the last thing you do. Okay. So yeah, so that's, you know, decoration. That's how you can draw colors on the board and things like that. That's pretty cool. And what else do we have here? We have uh, scoring. So you can say what the scores are worth. So I can say like if I hit one of these, uh, one of these diagonal, I don't know the terminology. I'm not a pinball wizard, but uh, if you hit one of these diagonal, like, bounce rubber band things, you can say it's worth... Can click, I can click here to add one point, or I can add here to click 10, or 100, or 1,000, or 10,000. It'll even do 100,000. Wow, that's crazy. You can say hitting one of those is now worth... 912,000 points. Wow, that's wacky. And then you, you can do the same for the bonus. You can control how much bonus these things are worth. You can do it for all these. You can set, reset the defaults if you want. Extra games. So you can, yeah, so you can say at what point do people get an extra game? Do they get it first at 30,000 points and then 58,000? You can say they get it at, you know, you get the idea. So you can just set the points that everything is worth here. Pretty cool. Um, what do we have here? Yeah, so here you can change the slope of the table, the tilt, speed, elasticity. Um... I do not know what stroboscope is, to be honest. No idea. If anybody knows what that might be, feel free to let me know. And yeah, here you can control the number of balls from 1 to 5. You can't go above 5. So yeah, I mean, I mean, most of these are obvious other than stroboscope. And elasticity is, I mean, I guess it's, you know, how bouncy. So if, like, the ball hits something, does it bounce off or does it kind of get... Uh, muffled and or you know does like does that dampen the motion of the ball or does it is it very elastic 
This is, uh, oh yeah, special combinations. So this is where you get like um, two times bonus. You can say like, I guess at when you score 5,000, then you get like a double bonus and then you can get a triple bonus, uh, whatever, I don't know. Oh, I see. This is the different combinations. Like that's the first combination. This is the second combination. This is the third combination. So right, so if you hit like 8,000 points, you can see you could get times two and or an extra ball. Okay, pretty cool. Um, that's to save and load. I'll go back there in a, in a moment. But yeah, here you can erase stuff. So you can say like erase all objects. Yes, so that erased, you know, the the items, like these kinds of items on the screen, or I can click again and say erase everything, erase the whole screen, yes. There we go. So yeah, that's if you wanna, you know, for big mistakes. Uh, and this is, I guess this is, can I actually, I don't seem to actually be able to change the uh, these settings. I guess this is just telling you you can change the mouse sensitivity here, but otherwise, um, yeah, it's a, it tells you that you control the plunger with the right and left flipper buttons simultaneously. So that's useful, but it doesn't actually um, let you change these controls. So the controls are kind of hardwired, but okay, fair enough. And this, I guess, will take you back to, uh, to play it. Yeah, this is when you want to play the table. But our table is empty. There's not actually... <laughs> Just for curiosity's sake, let's see what happens if we play a totally empty table. I mean, I'm gonna guess that... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what happens. You get zero points. Congratulations, you scored zero. Wow. <laughs> All right, I mean, this is, I mean, this is just, you know, this is amusing, but it's obviously... I mean, I like that you can do stuff like this. I like that you can mess around with it in this way, but this is obviously not something that would hold your interest for very long. You want to, you know, do something a little bit, little bit more imaginative than that, hopefully. Even if you, even if, you, if you're not very creative and imaginative, hopefully you want to be a little bit more imaginative than that. So, you know, I could be creative here and mess around, but I'm not a creative person myself. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and say, you can save your creation here, but let's say load. The game comes with a handful of tables. So what is this A7 high? Let's see what that is. Um... Okay, something a little different. Uh, yeah, so they've moved stuff around. Okay, let's just, just give this a quick play and see what it plays like. I'm gonna assume it's not... I'm gonna assume it's not radically different from what we uh, what we saw before. But let's just give it a quick play. So there's that arrow pointing up there. I don't know what the arrow is supposed to be pointing at. It's probably not meant to be pointing at anything. It's just a, just a formation there, but... All right, I got it into the little sinkhole there, and again, I don't know the terms. I don't know the proper terminology. I'm not a not a big pinball expert. Pinball is like one of those things. Uh, did the ball get stuck? Uh oh. Okay. Fortunately, you can press escape to escape from the game. So if the ball gets stuck, you can abort the game by pressing escape, which is better than having to restart the whole computer, I guess. All right, well, that's that table. Uh, might be a little buggy, but uh, okay, fair enough, not bad. What else do we have here? New Wave, is this, um, <clears throat> there's the one, yeah, it's, this is kind of crazy. This is like, um, I don't even know, man. This is like uh, some kind of bizarre sort of... I don't know who that person is. Is this like a drag queen? It looks like kind of one of those Japanese idols, you know, like one of those sort of uh, cyberpunk Japanese idols from the 1980s. Let's play this table. I just, I remember... I remember this table because uh, it's it's just so outlandish. Like I remember playing this as a kid and thinking, you know, what what was wrong with these people? They have very special problems. I mean, it's it's interesting. Like it's I mean, I, I appreciate the artistic creativity. You know, the artistic. Um, you know, it has a certain sort of artistry to it, which um, you know, which you just don't really see in in a lot of games today. I mean, that's the thing. I think one of the reasons why old games are so much fun. Is just because because they they existed at a time when video games were still very new. 
they could be really creative. And you could do just like, like really strange things with games back then, which, you know, people just, just wouldn't do today. Today, games are very commercial. And it's, it's kind of like movies, you know, like today, film studios don't want to release a movie that's too experimental. You know, there might be indie movies, uh, but, um, you know, most movies are just like very formulaic movies, uh, you know, familiar sort of hero stories. And I mean, of course, there are indie games as well. Like there are indie video games, obviously. But this was a time, you know, back in the 1980s, this was a time when even like major big name, big budget game studios were willing to do something super creative just because games were so new. It was kind of, you know, kind of a wild west. It was still a very creative time. So I liked the time I liked that time because it was a time when, you know, there there was big money to be had. Like, you know, there were big companies like EA and Activision and Accolade and whatever, you know, they were putting they were willing to create big budget games. Uh, but those games could still be really weird, like this pinball table of some Japanese Idoru idol uh, making dreamy faces at you while your pinball pins the balls. He's got he's got one of those sinkholes in his in his hairdo there, I and mean, it's just I mean it's 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 weird. I mean it's obviously I mean I'm, it's it's obviously meant to be weird. It's it's obviously meant to be a little bit. Uh, WTF, but it's it's fun. I mean, this is, this kind of stuff is is fun. It's it's interesting. It's something uh, something different. Okay, so that was that. Let's go back and see what other tables we have here. Um, so that that was New Wave, I think. So let's take a look at Panama. All right. I'm just curious. I'm going to see what else we have here because these tables are just just a little bit samey in my opinion. Um, yeah, I mean this is also very similar. It's just oh this is oh this is the default table. This is the one that we started with. This is the one that we already played. So I guess okay STD means standard. So you have game STD and then you have STD. How many STDs did they catch playing this game? Um, oh. So game STD and STD are the same. All right, fine. All right, then I guess the last table we haven't played is uh, Panama. So let's just give Panama a quick go. And, you know, I mean, I could make a table here spontaneously, but I'm, I'm just not good at it. I mean, you know, I'm not good at designing stuff like this. I remember when I was a kid, I made a, a, t a table that was just full of bumpers. I think I had nothing but bumpers in it. And there was, so there was really not much element of control. In fact, there was no element of control because you had no flippers. I guess you could tilt. The game does have tilt controls, doesn't it? Yeah, you can you can shake the mouse to actually do like a tilt kind of thing. So okay, so that's possible to do. What happens if I say keyboard here? Oh, I see. So the flippers are always controlled with the keyboard, or I mean, the flipper controls don't change, but the tilt controls change. So if you have mouse selected here, you can shake the table with the mouse. Otherwise, you can press these keys to hit the table right, left, or in the middle. Okay, that's interesting. All right, cool. All right, so yeah, so you'd still have some element of control because you could still hit the table, but otherwise it was just, you know, just a bunch of bumpers. There were no flippers. And I thought that was pretty cool when I was a kid because, you know, I wasn't very good at pinball and still am not today. So I thought it was more interesting just to watch what the pinball did than to try to actually play pinball. But anyway, let's go ahead and play this and... And then I guess that'll be enough for now. All right, so let's play Panama. The Panama Papers, the Panama Pinballs. That doesn't make much sense, but that's okay. Oh wow, that just that just went straight down there. Go on. All right, there we go. Now we're getting some. Now we're getting some realistic Panama pinball action. This is exactly what it's like being in Panama. I should know. I've never been there, but I've I've played this pinball table. Now I know what it's like to be in Panama. Oh, maybe because of the canals. I was just, just going to say, why do they call it Panama? But maybe because it has those like channels on the right, and they're kind of like canals, like the Panama Canal is supposed to be. Maybe I I don't know. I have no idea. I really don't know. I don't know anything about Panama except that it's in Central America, and they speak Spanish there, and there's a canal there, and it's called the Panama Canal, and there are 
boats that go through the canal that do shipping through the Panama Canal because it's because that's why they have the canal there so that the boats can canal through it. Yeah, that I find that sound effect just a bit annoying. Not so annoying that I would mute the audio. I, I find it, you know, it's I mean it's it's an authentic Apple II GS sound. So, oh wow. I'm not good at Panama. I did not uh, I did not study the the Panama papers very well. I did not figure out how to play this table. Not good at playing Panama. Pinball. I am poor at playing Panama pinball. All right. Well, oh, I have one more ball. <laughs> I'm almost like at this point I just want it to be over because this uh, this table is just not doing it for me. Like, this table is not quite working for me. Oh, <laughs> the ball just goes back down. Okay, you shoot again. Just falls right back down the plunger lane. Sure, why not? Just just shoot again. I mean, yeah, this table's not bad, but it's just like most of the tables are just fairly pedestrian. They're just like you know fairly basic pinball stuff. Just that just that one. That one new wave table. I mean, it's it's visually, it doesn't necessarily play a whole lot differently, but obviously visually it's something very different from the rest of the stuff in this game. They really put like a lot of decorative, like non-functional decorative artwork into the table just to make it look kind of distinctive. All right. I guess that was it. That was Pinball Wizard for the Apple II GS, and this was also released for other platforms, uh, and it's, you know, similar on other platforms. I mean, it's, it's basically the same game, but as with many other games, I think that the Apple II GS version is the best. So, that's that. Now you've seen it. Hope you enjoyed watching. Thanks for watching, everyone. I will talk to you folks later with another video on another game some other time. Until then, bye-bye for now, and keep on pinballing the wizard.